President Abdel Fattah Sisi received on Tuesday General Tutku Gutalak, the security advisor to South Sudan's president. The meeting was attended by the General Intelligence Chief, Lieutenant Abbas Kamil. And during the meeting, the South Sudanese security advisor handed President Sisi a message from President Salva Kiir. The meeting tackled means of boosting bilateral ties and the latest developments in Sudan. It also centered on ongoing efforts to settle the crisis and the security of the Sudanese people, as well as humanitarian and political challenges of the country. Both sides stressed the significance of urging Sudanese sides to keep the truth and moving to a permanent and comprehensive ceasefire. They reiterated that the permanent ceasefire would allow humanitarian aid into the country and open the path for a constructive dialogue to settle the crisis and continue with the transitional path and political process to keep the unity of Sudan. Prime Minister Mustafa Madbouli witnessed the signing of a strategic framework between Egypt and the United Nations on Tuesday. The partnership framework is signed from the Egyptian side by the Minister of International Cooperation, Rani al Mashad, and the resident representative of the United Nations in Egypt, Elena Panova. Addressing the ceremony, the Prime Minister said Egypt achieved great development in facing global challenges. The Prime Minister noted that the government prioritizes quick procedures to boost economic development. For her part, Minister Al-Mashad said the signing ushers a new strategic stage of mutual cooperation between Egypt and the United Nations, one of the biggest international organizations. The minister confirmed that her ministry is keen to tackle its national role regarding the enhancement of benefiting chances from the international strategy between Egypt and the UN. The framework organizes the development projects which the UN agencies operating in Egypt implement in accordance with the priorities of Egypt's government and national plan for sustainable development for 2030. These projects come in line with the UN Sustainable Development Goals of 2030. Both sides co-chair the Joint Steering Committee of the Strategic Framework of Partnership between Egypt and the United Nations for Sustainable Development. Prime Minister Mustafa Madbouli held a tour of the new administrative capital where he inspected the headquarters of the Capital Security Directorate as part of preparations to hand over the building in a bid to start operating. The Prime Minister also inspected the security and radar system in the headquarters. Bouli inspected the control systems as well as cameras and monitors specified to follow up on the areas of the new administrative capital. During his tour, the Prime Minister visited the Data Collection Centre for information concerning ministries in the administrative capital. Bouli also inspected the Housing Ministry's headquarters at the government district whether he listened to Minister of Housing, Dr. Asim al Ghazar's statement concerning the building's contents. He was informed by the entry and exit system of the ministry's employees and the electronic gating system. Foreign Minister Sema Shukri visited Juba to convey a message from President Abdel Fattah Sisi to South Sudan's President Salva Kiir on the situation in Sudan. This came after wrapping up his visit to, his, uh, to Chad's capital. During his visit in Chad, the top diplomat delivered a message from the president to the Chadian president, Mohammed Idris Debe. During his meeting with the Chadian president, Shukri reviewed Egypt's efforts since the start of Sudan's crisis with the sta two sta struggling sides to reach a ceasefire. He pointed that Egypt had received 60,000 Sudanese fleeing from military confrontations. The two sides agreed on the necessity of continued joint coordination to solve the crisis and keep the unity and safety of Sudan. Then the framework of Egypt's intensive efforts to return Egyptians and foreigners stranded in Sudan, an Egyptian military ship arrived at Safaga port carrying 466 people including 272 Egyptians and 184 Sudanese and other nationalities. Authorities continue the evacuation of Egyptians and other nationalities from Sudan and guarantee the safety of others who have not returned home. Minister of Defense and Military Production Mohamed Zaki met with his Iraqi counterpart Thabit Mohamed Saeed Al-Abbasi and his accompanying delegation. 
The meeting dealt with developments of the regional and international arenas and the repercussions on the security and stability in light of the current uh, challenges and circumstances as well as means of increasing bilateral cooperation. The Iraqi minister expressed his appreciation for Egypt's supportive efforts regionally and internationally. During its 24th session, the Board of Trustees of the National Dialogue expressed full confidence in the support of all parties in the country to the National Dialogue. In this context, and based on the prompt response of President Abdel Fattah Sisi to the proposal of the Board of Trustees of the Dialogue for for judicial supervision in the general elections, the Board hopes that all parties will continue their necessary positive efforts to prepare the atmosphere for upcoming elections. The Board of Trustees hailed the presidential pardon decision for some prisoners within the President's constitutional powers and looks forward to the continuation of issuing more of such decisions during the upcoming period and wishes that the Presidential Pardon Committee to intensify the legal efforts to release more detainees. Egypt condemned the Israeli escalation in the occupied Palestinian territories. In a statement, the Foreign Ministry stressed its total refusal of such attacks that are contrary with international law and legislations and worsen the situation to a level that could be out of control in the occupied Palestinian territories and limit the efforts of calm and decreasing tension. Israel killed three Palestinian fighters and ten civilians in a surprise airstrike on Gaza on Tuesday during the threat of reprisals uh, from Palestinian factions. Signaling it anticipated an imminent flare-up, Israel closed roads and occupied towns near Gaza 